All right. Well, this week we're going to hear from one of our beloved elders, and that's Pastor Harry Walcott. And he's going to be speaking to us on destiny. Where are we headed? Now, in a prayer meeting this week, I heard someone, I think it was Richard Delissa, who was just really thanking God for the elders of this house. And I would like to reiterate that this morning, that we really want to give God thanks for Pastor Rawl, for Pastor Bruce Polso, for Pastor Michael Mackinoff Jones, and for Pastor Harry Walcott. They are four, they are, f and for Gary Mesado, yes, hallelujah, right? They are men with very tender hearts. I can tell you, every one of them. Now, Pastor Harry has been with this fellowship for maybe 39 out of the 40 years, right? And he has been an elder for a little over 25 years. And I can attest to a man, an elder with a very tender heart. Yes. And I would just love to say, I, you know, on Friday gone, I think it was, or Thursday, well, Pastor Harry oversees the prayer ministry, the prophetic ministry, and the deliverance ministry of this church. And he is also uh, serves as the president of Jamaica House of Prayer, which is out of CLF, you know. And we were having our um, leaders retreat at the office, and we are closed, so we're not expecting anybody to come to us, right? Even though there wasn't a close sign on the door. But in the midst of him downloading to us a dream that he had had the night before, a dream that he felt significant in, 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 in us going forward and vision going forward with all ears tuned in, ready to hear, ready to write, the buzzer rings. And we answered, and it was, you know, one of these beggars at the door. And in my administrative tone, I said, tell her we are not available. He's not available. He cannot speak right now. And can I tell you that Pastor Harry's heart was disturbed he could he he had it very hard to go any further and i felt really bad and i said lord this man is such a hard conditioner you know and um but we continued the meeting but he really really it stalled him for a while and i want to give god thanks for this man and i pray God's continued blessing upon his life and that his heart continues to stay in that place. Amen. Welcome, Pastor Harry. And without, you know, drawing undue attention to the, the media team, I want to thank God for them and the work that they do because they do really, really good work you know, in, in getting everything organized and in place. The funny thing about life, you know, is that something can be going very well all the time and we take it for granted until something not going so well. And then you take note. Eh? But I really want to thank God for them, for Brother Joseph and the rest of the team. Um, for what they do on Sundays, but it's not just Sundays. Remember the, um, the event we just had, the 40th anniversary celebration, um, and all of those events. You know, these brethren have been putting a lot of work 
into making it possible for us to celebrate those times. So I want to celebrate them this morning and just say thank you very much. Amen. Thank you, thank you. And I know I give them a little trouble this morning again, giving them the scriptures that I have so late. So when you see, you know, they can't bring it up because they don't have it at hand. It's not their fault, it's mine. Praise God. All right, so I have the, let me remove this hindrance. I have the responsibility this morning to share with you a little bit more about what we believe the Lord is or has highlighted for this month, the month of October. We decided to look at the issue of those things, issues related to things that affect our our vision, our view, our world view, and we titled the month's teachings through the lens of the Bible. And this is in an effort to really influence how we see life from the perspective of the scriptures. The first week, we looked at the title or we shared out of the title in the beginning as we looked at issues related to you know God and creation and the fact that it is the God of heaven the God who rules and reigns over everything that has made everything and to him belongs everything he's the possessor of heaven and earth the second week looked at the human dilemma and the evolution of human wickedness. In the third week, we looked at the issue of truth and morality. All of these we're looking at through the lens of the scriptures. And on the fourth week, we looked at the purpose and the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? Why are we here and what is our work this week we want to be looking at what the scriptures have to say concerning our destiny where are we headed what is going to happen to us as human beings the scripture admonishes us to live in the light of eternity. Not to be limited by what we see here on earth and what we experience here on earth. But to live in the light of what the scriptures teach about what is to come after this. And brethren, it is so important for us to be knowledgeable about these things. To understand what the scriptures have to say about what is yet to come concerning us as people living on earth. Um, we, we really need that kind of perspective. A perspective that takes us beyond what is natural and into the supernatural. If we don't have... A, a, a view or a, a, a paradigm a, a perspective concerning what happens after this we're going to be a really frustrated set of people especially if you are a Christian and you're trying to live righteously because your determination and desire to live righteously is going to bring some trouble into your lives the scriptures make it plain that those who would live godly in this present um, life are going to have tribulation because the world is not a righteous place 
So you're going to come into conflict with people. So there is a need for us to understand what God has prepared for us, who we are in God, and where we are heading. Truth is, brethren, that there are many things that God has prepared for his children. The sad reality is for many of us who are believers, we are ignorant of many of those things. We don't know what those things are. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, it says, But it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the nor have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. So eyes have not seen it, ears have not heard it. So how does God expect us to know these things? He says, the natural senses have not perceived all of what God has prepared for those who love him. Indeed, the things that God has prepared for us are things that God will reveal to us as we pursue him. There are a number of things revealed. You know, scriptures that make reference to what we can expect concerning our lives as it relates to us living here now but not limited to us living here now but what is in the hereafter the apostle paul is saying that there are many things that god has prepared for us that we need to know about today i want to take us on a little journey to explore some of those things certainly not all of them for one i don't know all of them but there are things that are revealed that we can know and it is important for us to know what god has prepared for those who love him a couple of reasons why we need to know one of them is that knowledge of what god has prepared for us inspires hope and brethren nobody can live without hope even if your hope is weak and you, you don't even understand all what you're about but people have different things that they put their hope in and what motivates them to keep on living if you lose hope you will eventually end up in a place where you don't believe that it makes sense living and that is a place that many people have ended up and not just contemplate suicide but uh, but but actually commit suicide because they have lost hope right hope protects the mind it protects the heart the bible refers to salvation as the helmet of salvation because hope protects your mind keeps you sane keeps gives you motivation for life and you keep on going this kind of knowledge also is a protection from deception brethren the knowledge of the truth is a powerful protector from deception if the people in st james at that church that we have been hearing so much about really understood the truth they would not have been deceived by that man they ended up being deceived by him because they did not know the truth of the scriptures concerning how leaders should operate how believing christian leaders should operate and that they should not be lording it the scripture says 
over God's heritage, but should be good examples to the flock. Right? That's just one example. Can't go into all of the different things that we need to be aware of to avoid ending up in a cult. But lack of knowledge or the lack of knowledge of basic truths can lead us to great harm. So there are some things that you need to know. John chapter 8 verse 32 says, You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If we don't understand what God has prepared for us, and if those things don't inspire hope in our hearts, brethren, Satan can do all kinds of things with us. We have us like a football just kicking all over the place because you don't know who you are, you don't know what you're about, you don't know who God really is, and you don't know where you're going to end up. So Satan inspires fear instead of hope and he controls the lives of people through fear especially the fear of death how many people are being troubled by the fear of death right now with the covid pandemic that fear has skyrocketed and people are making decisions some foolish decisions I believe too. People make all kinds of erroneous decisions when we are afraid. We just feel that boy, something we have to do something now. So, um, you know, we cast all restraints aside and just say, I'm going to do this because somebody tell you that this is good for you right now. And so, we need to know the truth. We need to understand the truth. And I could say a whole lot about that, but I really want to zone in this morning on some things that are important for us to know, particularly as it relates to the age to come and what is going to happen to us after we die. If you can overcome the fear of death, brethren, there is nothing that Satan can do to stop you from fulfilling the purposes of God. That is why the Apostle Paul was so effective, you know. It's hard to stop a man who is not afraid to die. Willing to go anywhere, do anything, face any foe, because... Is not afraid of death. So, where are we going? What is to become of us? What is our destiny? I want to look a little bit at this issue of life after death and what the scripture has to say about that. Because that is a reality that we must embrace we must believe because if you don't believe it and you're trying to live like a christian in this life you're going to be of all men most miserable because you're going to find all kinds of opposition and trouble and distress and if you don't have an understanding of who you are where you're going to go and the fact that god has great things in store for you this life is going to be very, very miserable. So the, 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 the resurrection, life after death is a reality that I really want to impress on our hearts this morning that the scriptures teach and that we need to believe and that through this faith, through this belief, we can actually have joy in this life in spite of tribulation, trials, and frustrating people. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 12 says, Now if Christ is preached that he has been... And let, me, let me read that again. 
Yes, that's what it is actually. Now if Christ is preached that he has been risen from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection from the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom, you, whom he did not raise up if in fact the dead do not rise. Brethren, this is, well, these verses are Paul countering the teachings of some people who were saying that there is no resurrection. There was a set of people who were teaching that. There were another set of people too who were preaching that the resurrection had already gone. And Paul had to do a lot of teaching and correcting of false paradigms, false perspectives, lies that people were disseminating. Some of them probably ignorantly, um, but some it would appear with the um, with 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 wrong motives, actually trying to destabilize the faith of some people. Some people that you know you might refer to as associates of Satan. You know, Satan has some associates. He has some people working with him. But we believe what the scriptures teach. There is going to be a resurrection of the dead. And if you are a believer, you are going to be raised from the dead to face a whole new dimension of life in a body that will not be able to die again. If you can believe this, brethren, you can live in this life with a certain kind of confidence that inspires joy in your heart. It can strengthen you because you have a vision of what is to come that actually inspires not just hope but produces joy in our hearts. You can have joy. You can have joy right now in the midst of the COVID pan pandemic. You can have joy. If you believe what the word of God says. Jesus, in speaking to Martha, I don't know if you know the story about Martha and Mary. Jesus was speaking to her about the resurrection. And he said, making it clear to her that he was the resurrection and the life. And that anybody who believes in him, that though he dies, he will live. And then he says, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Now I know the AV team didn't have that scripture. But you know, I was reading that scripture one day and I'm not trying to understand what Jesus was saying about this. And it, ju it just occurred to me as I meditated on it that Jesus was saying that if you believe in him, you will have eternal life. Right? He who lives and believes in me, he goes on to say, will never die. And I was trying to understand that. And then, in the understanding that I have concerning the fact that there is a day coming 
when Jesus is going to put in his appearance. You know, Jesus says, he was saying that if you die, you will live. And then he says, and he who lives and believes in me shall never die. And that is the part, that last part that I was trying to figure out when it occurred to me that there is a day coming when Jesus is going to put in his appearance and that there are some people who are going to be alive when he comes who are not going to die. You know that the, the scriptures actually say that? In 1 Corinthians, I think it's the same, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says that those who are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. This mortal will put on immortality. This corrupt body will put on immoral, Im not immorality, immortality and we are not going to die ever again. For it is appointed unto man once to die. Once to die. He says, and after death, judgment. But after death, there is this hope that we have of being resurrected. We're going to be resurrected. We're going to have a new body. We're going to have an incorruptible, eternal body. And I want to look a little bit at what our resurrected bodies are going to be like. Because the scripture actually tells you a bit about that. In Ephesians chapter, nine, in chapter 1, 9 and 10, it says... Having made known to us the mystery or the hidden plan of his will, that is God, that he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Brethren, there is... God has a plan. Things are not happening haphazardly. God has a plan. And he's working that plan out. And he's inviting us to partner, in, partner with him in the fulfillment of his purposes on earth. That is why he says you must pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now the centerpiece of God's eternal purpose is for Jesus to come back to establish his kingdom over the whole earth as he joins the heavenly realm and the earthly realm together. I know a lot of Christians don't have any concept of what that really is about. But this kind of interplay is important for us to understand this relationship between heaven and earth and what God is doing and what I just mentioned about the, the purpose of God of bringing heaven and earth together has always been in the heart of God for his people to live together with him in this way on earth here forever God has this plan for us to actually have this close relationship with him as he comes to dwell on earth and to dwell with his people it is what God is preparing us for we want to have this Understanding this clear understanding to remove confusion about what God is doing. God actually wants to tabernacle with men. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3 refers to 
God coming to dwell with man. And this veil between heaven and earth is going to be removed. And God is going to bring the two together. God made the whole universe by his own power. And he made two distinct realms. Two distinct realms. We know of heaven and we know about the natural realm that we are aware of, very aware of. But heaven speaks of the spiritual realm where God's power and his presence is openly manifest. Right? In heaven, God's power is seen as he demonstrates that power without any kind of veil. Earth speaks of the physical realm where human processes, emotions, and physical sensations reach their fullest expression. We are very aware of earth. We are very aware of our bodies. We are aware of our emotions, even if we don't understand them. But heaven and earth are realities that we need to be very aware of. As I said before, we're very aware of earth because our senses make us very aware of earth. But we also have spiritual senses that we need to develop because there's a spirit realm that God wants us to become very aware of. Now these two realms, God is intent on bringing them together. And the Bible talks about all things coming together in Christ. And Jesus as he, he, he is now is that expression of what is yet to come. Because this spiritual man has a physical body. Don't know how many of you are very aware of that. But Jesus actually has a physical body. Spiritual yet physical. And that is why we have hope of the resurrection. Jesus was raised bodily from the dead. And because he has been raised from the dead, we have this hope. That's why Paul was saying, if Christ is not risen, our preaching is empty. Your faith is vain. And you're wasting your life. But Jesus Christ is risen. He has a physical body. And we are going to have a body that is like his at the resurrection. We are not like those ancient Greek philosophers who had a particular philosophy about life and man that viewed the spirit realm as what is good and the realm of the earth and the material realm they said is just bad and you don't want to have anything to do with the physical realm so there is the philosophy and teaching that even among Christians that says you know any, anything that is of the natural realm is not good and is to be done away with only the spirit is really good and so you must develop your spirit and your spiritual perceptivity and all of that and live in accordance with what the spirit leads us to do but this is a wrong philosophy that actually has penetrated the church and it leads us to think wrongly about heaven and somebody said if you think wrongly about heaven you won't think about heaven but the scriptures actually admonish us to think about heaven in Colossians chapter 3 it says set your affections on things above not on the things of this earth right set your affections on the things above but it don't mean that everything on earth is is evil and is to be you know 
don't know where with. God wants us to think rightly about his creation and what he has made and how we relate to all that he has made. For there is a time, a day coming when God is going to bring everybody who is dead back to life. Scripture says some to eternal damnation, but some to eternal life. Those who believe in Jesus Christ are going to be raised to experience eternal life. This is not just a raising up of your spirit. This is a raising up of your bodies, no matter what happened to it after you die. Some people have this teaching, you know, that, you know, you mustn't cremate people because, I suppose it's because God not going to be able to find you when you come back. But brethren, many of the saints were, were burnt at the stake, you know that? And Jesus said to his disciples that even though they kill you and they do all kinds of things with you, he says even the hairs of your head are numbered and not one of them shall perish. So no matter where you end up after you die, then put you in the sea and shark eat you, bury you in the ground and worms eat you, or burn you at the stake and you turn into powder. God is going to bring you back from wherever you have been or wherever you are. You're going to be resurrected and you're going to have a new body. Jesus was the first human being to experience victory over death, to have entered into eternal life in terms of his physical body. I know you had some people who died and Jesus rose from the dead brought them back from the dead but that's not the same thing because they had to die again but Jesus was or is referred to as the first born from the dead first born from the dead in other words Jesus is the first of a whole new race of people and you brethren believers you and I are his brethren who are to be made just like him in terms of our bodies that is your destiny that is my destiny God wants us to be clear about that because Jesus after he rose from the dead it was not just for himself he shares his victory over death with other human beings who live in relationship with him we share in that brethren and so believers are going to receive or be given resurrected bodies at the time of the trumpet sound that announces Jesus' second coming that is something we should be rejoicing about something that should cause joy to overflow in our hearts first corinthians chapter 15 15 to 57 paraphrasing this he says the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible verse 54 says death is swallowed up in victory thanks to god thanks be to god who gives us the victory through jesus because of what he experienced we will also experience at death if we were to die now our spirits go to be with the lord that is clear i believe from the scriptures we will receive our resurrected bodies at the time when jesus returns to the earth believers have died you know um, over the last 2,000 years since Jesus um, died and was resurrected and 
all during that time Christians who have died they find themselves in a temporary holding pattern in he heaven and I said temporary because you're not going to be up there forever you're going to be in heaven forever but guess what heaven is coming to earth there is the picture of the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven to the earth and those who are believers and who have given their lives have a, their part in the new Jerusalem when you're in heaven you don't need a resurrected body right you don't need a resurrected body to relate to heaven right in that spiritual environment but when you come back to earth if you're going to relate to the earth you need a body and you are coming back to earth revelation chapter 19 tells you of jesus coming back to earth and there's a picture of him coming back with the saints that is the saints who have who had died over those many many centuries but they are coming back with the lord and the scripture says at that time that those of us who are alive are not going to prevent those who died before us in fact they are going to be honored by the lord by being resurrected before us he says they he says the dead in christ shall rise first they died before us they will be raised before us but those of us who are alive will be changed the scripture says imagine your body you know you know some of us <laughs> some of us having aches and pains related to age you know last night i was lying down in the bed rosie came up and said what i mean just come and just go and lie down in the bed i said well you know i didn't say it like this but i could have said well this old body can manage like how it used to manage before so i just feel that like i have to come lie down for a little bit before i do anything else because i was really having a bad back backache but brethren imagine you struggling with this body that is aching and paining and you don't have to be old to have aches and pains you just need a you just need to have an injury you know so, so you don't have to be my age to know what i'm talking about and some people having all kinds of trouble in their bodies heart problem kidney problem you know high blood pressure problem um diabetes and some of the very common sicknesses just just have you taking drugs and all kind of things every day just to stay alive but there is a day coming brethren when this mortal shall put on immortality this corrupt body shall become incorruptible and we who are alive alive today or at that time will put on this new body brethren this is our destiny in god you know when paul was here on earth he described his own desire to be with the lord and he said to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord and he says that was far better than what he was experiencing on earth at that time but then he said in first thessalonians 4 verse 16 he, he says the lord himself will descend from heaven with the trumpet blast he says the dead in christ shall rise 
first. So the Lord is not creating a completely new body in that you're going to have this same body. It's not a, it's not a new body in the sense that this one is done away with and just create a whole new one and, and give you. Your body, the one that laid in the ground or wherever it was, is going to be resurrected and this same body is going to put on some new eternal dimensions. To prove that it was the same body that Jesus had before he died, he said to Thomas who was doubting that it was him, come and look at the marks in my hand because they were still there. It was the same body. But it had some new characteristics. It had some new dimensions to it. Right? Jesus' resurrected body could do some things that the body that he had before couldn't do. Well, unless, of course, God worked some special miracle. Because I believe that if he needed to while he was on earth, he could walk through walls. But this new body has this innate characteristic. It can do things that the body couldn't do before. But it still will be able to do some things that it could do before. Some things that I'm sure some people will like. Like eating. <laughs> eating and drinking. We're still going to be able to do it. And in fact, you're still going to be doing it. You're still going to be doing it. Because Jesus talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Jesus said to his disciples, he says, I'm not going to drink this you know, fruit of fruit of the vine until I drink it with you after the resurrection, putting it in my words. But we're still going to be able to enjoy. In fact, I believe that our senses are going to be enhanced. You love food now? You love nice food now? Well, I believe that in that time and with that kind of body, you're going to be able to enjoy food in a way that you were never able to enjoy it in this life. It's not that God don't want you to enjoy things in a bedroom. Because some people are going to say, well, you know, you must be careful about overeating and, you know, doing things to excess. And it's true. While we are here in this life, don't make anything control you. But in the next life, you won't have that problem. You're going, eat, you're going to be able to eat and enjoy what you have. You're going to have supernatural knowledge. You won't have necessarily all knowledge, but you're going to have supernatural knowledge. We will know as we are known. We will work with a deep sense of purpose because I hope this is not going to discourage anybody, but you're still going to have work to do after the resurrection yes because he's going to assign to people different responsibilities you know this the, the scripture about the talents and him giving people rule over different cities so these are some things that we are to be aware of god wants us to be aware of there are a lot of things that he wants us to know concerning the, the tremendous rewards that he has in store for those who believe. And I can't go into all of those now because my time basically is up. But God wants us to be aware that he has prepared much for us to enter into and to experience after this life. This is not the only thing that is to be experienced. This life is not 
the end all. God wants us to be aware that one day we're going to die. But death is not the end for the believer. Some people are going to die long before others. Some people die old. Some people die young. But brethren, what we are called to do and to be aware of now is the will of God. And in doing the will of God, God promises to reward us in the life that is coming. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. That each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Now quickly just make reference to this and to say this is not the great white throne judgment that he's talking about where people are going to be judged and eventually cast into hell. But we are talking about believers appearing before what the Bible refers to as the judgment seat of Christ. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And each of us shall, be, shall give account of himself to God. Romans 14, 10 to 12. All of us are going to stand before the judgment seat or the bema seat. And we are going to give account of what we have done in this body. God has so much in store for us. He's going to reward the believer. He's going to reward you for what you have done. No good thing, no matter how small that you have done in this life, in accordance with the will of God, is going to go unrewarded. You will be rewarded. Each one of us will receive his own reward according to his own labor. And Paul says, if anyone builds on the foundation that God has established with gold or silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will be revealed by fire. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. Brethren, God has much in store for you. Your destiny in God is a destiny that is full of hope. It is a destiny filled with the joy of the Lord. And I want to encourage us today to give attention to the word of God. Search it out. Search out what it says concerning who you are. Search out what it says concerning the resurrection from the dead. Understand it well. Search out what it says concerning the rewards and the gifts that God has prepared for those who love him. Jesus is going to reward us. He's going to express how he feels about the way that you loved him in this life. He's going to reward you for working closely with him to fulfill his purpose in this life. And ultimately we are going to reign with him in the life to come. He's going to vindicate you for the choices you have made in this life as you choose to serve him. So be, be aware of this today that God has much in store for those who love him. Wonderful things prepared for those who seek his face and who seek to walk uprightly with him. For the eyes of the Lord go to and fro the whole earth, beholding the evil and the good, to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose walk is upright before him. And he will bless us with much in this life. But that is not all. He has so much yet 
to release to us and to bless us with in the life that is to come. I'm going to just pray today as I invite those who may be hearing me today and you're not saved. I'm inviting you into this place where you can begin to experience the blessings of his presence and to experience ultimately the eternal rewards that are prepared for those who belong to him. But you have to belong to him. And the way to belong to him is to ask him to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and God has made a way in Christ that you might enter into life for God's soul of the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life this includes your body sick as it may be right now God is saying I have a new body for you I have a new body that you will have at the resurrection he who believes in me though he dies he will live Jesus says and he who lives and believes in me will never die father i pray that you will bless those who are hearing my voice now lord for the christian believer lord i pray that these words would have inspired hope lord in a time when lord there is so much fear so much distress lord men are fearful about getting sick lord and fearful about dying because we have heard about so many people dying so many people that we know about have passed away and we are wondering if i am going to be next but father we pray for every believer in this room and every believer who is watching online that you would minister the grace of God to them and that their hearts will be filled with this assurance that if they believe in you they will have the blessings promised to those who believe Lord I pray for those who are not yet saved that they would embrace this way of salvation by asking Jesus to come into their hearts and to forgive them of their sins and to bring them into this new dimension of life where they can walk in newness of life so bless them Lord we pray reveal your heart to them we pray bring them into life today in Jesus name we pray amen 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 amen